Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're inside of Photoshop taking a look at this neon poster. Let's get started. Tip Tut. Okay then, so here we are inside of Photoshop. We're gonna learn how to recreate this simple poster here uh, using this kind of neonish effect uh, and this kind of grainy noise addition as well. So we're gonna go to File and New. Uh, we're gonna choose a print canvas here, A4 in size and hit Create. Now, first things first, let's drop in a nice background with our rectangle tool. I'm gonna to choose a nice dark gray, maybe with a touch of yellow in it. Let's drag that over our canvas like so. That's a bit bright, so let's darken it up a bit. Uh, looks good to me. Somewhere around there. Okay, great. So first thing, you're gonna to need to choose your text. I'm just gonna select my new text here uh, and type in something random just so that I can scale it up. Okay, so we're gonna have uh, the words um, this is uh, a neon tutorial. And what we're looking for for this particular one is this kind of empty space here so that we can um, uh, fill that with a different different type of text. So let's make this uh, 86 in size. Is that all right? That looks okay. Let's make it a bit larger. Let's have it be 102. So um, when you're doing the um, leading in normal text, you want the leading here to be 120% of your font size. In this case, I think that might be a bit large, but it would in fact be uh, 12, 24, that'd be 126 leading. Um, one, two, six. Now, as suspected, that leaves quite a large gap. So we're gonna to want to tighten this up until the text is pretty close to each other, which looks pretty good. And we're gonna make it a slight off white. Okay. So now that we've got our main text, let's just position that down the bottom here for a nice bit of uh, visual imbalance. And I'm just gonna increase this just slightly, give ourselves a bit more breathing room. Okay, that's great. So with that in place, uh, it's starting to look okay. Let's add in our second piece of text here. Um, we're gonna have it be the words, isn't it cool? Question mark, exclamation mark. We scale that up as well. And we now need to apply a sort of um, spray paint-ish font to it. Now, uh, one I've used recently is Fresh Marker. That looks quite nice, um, but there's no apostrophe, which isn't very good. So uh, we could have it be, oh no, there's an apostrophe in ain't as well. Wow. Oh, there's an apostrophe in it's. All these contractions. Um, let's have it say, really cool! Exclamation mark. <laughs> uh, let's just have it say it's without the um, uh, 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 apostrophe. So I'm going to cut this into its own words. Uh, in fact, we could probably just use, there we go, a speech mark instead. So I'm going to cut this into its own words. Hit Control J, paste back what remains. Control X to cut that again. Control J to duplicate it. And this allows us to um, yeah, manipulate these words individually. So if you select all of them, go to the color in your properties panel here. And I'm just gonna give this a nice bright yellow. Bam, that looks pretty good. So let's do that to the others as well. So we can quickly eyedropper these. Awesome. Let's grab all of these and start positioning them in place. So what you want here is for it to overlap the text a little bit, but not so much that it becomes distracting. You can scale some stuff up. You can uh, rotate it a little bit. If you need to, like here, for example, I might increase the uh, kerning just to separate out this I a little bit from the T there so that it looks a little bit more like an actual word. Um, take this really, put that underneath. Now it's nice I find if some of the text here touches, like the S touches the A, that looks quite good. And let's grab this as well. And pop that there. Now this is just gonna take a little bit of playing depending on what words you've got, what words you've chosen. Um, but I think that looks pretty good. What I might do is see if I can decrease 
the kerning on this text a little bit, maybe just a negative 10. <laughs> so I just typed in negative 10, so undo that. Uh, just to tighten up these letters a touch, they look a little bit airy. Yeah, that's nicer. Cool. And then we can take It's Really Cool, and we can start playing around with that, like so. Okay, that looks pretty good. But this looks a lot better because of a few simple filters that we've applied. Now, we forget the paper, text, uh, paper effect. Even if we turn that off, it still looks quite cool. Now, this is mainly because we've added a subtle blur and noise to the text, and we've added some spray painty effects around this text here too. Uh, and we've also added, when we add the paper, we've added a slight shine and other things like that, just to separate it out. So let's get on to doing that then. To do that, you need to select all of these layers uh, because you can't directly apply a filter to a text layer. You need to select all of these layers and convert them to a smart object. Now, this keeps them being completely vector so you can scale them how you like. But if you double click the thumbnail, it'll open up the rest of that in its own um, uh, canvas. What this does allow, however, is us to add effects layers and things uh, as well as adjustment layers to this particular group of text here. So what we're going to add is a blur, a Gaussian blur. Now, maybe I'm going to add a two pixel blur on this. Not too much. You just want to make it look like it's starting to bleed into uh, the paper if it were there. Inside of this, uh, it's really cool layer. What we're going to do is um, what I've done on this one here, look, if you notice, we go to the, uh, the text. Inside the text here, I've added another layer. You can see it more clearly over this text with just a selection of um, paintbrush effects. And we've also added a slight glow to get that neon styling to it as well. So let's just close that down. Um, and we can take a look at adding that to this one as well. So inside of here, we're gonna grab this. This yellow is looking a bit much, so I might just pop those in a folder. And then on that folder, I'm gonna choose color overlay. And I'm just gonna redo that yellow. So maybe we make it a little bit more orangey like so that looks a bit nicer okay whilst we're here we might as well add the outer glow you can pop that on now i like a blend mode of normal for this technique uh, we're going to choose the same yellow so it looks like it's been glowing out a little bit and you can increase or decrease the size to your wish uh, and you may want to come back through and adjust this let's add a little bit of noise on there as well you want to come back through and adjust this once you see it against the background with the uh, text on it so if we save this we'll see that update here and we've noticed we've got that glow. So on the black background, that's actually quite heavy. So we can go through and we can readjust that outer glow. Like for example, I might change that outer glow's color to be slightly darker, but decrease the size of it just a little bit, like so. Then when we pop back here, that looks a little bit nicer. Okay, on top of this, let's add in a new layer. I'm gonna to go to my brush tool. And what I've got here is just a bunch of brushes uh, under the wet media brushes folder, which you can load in by going here, uh, importing a brush pack or um, searching through your pre-installed brush packs under the brush uh, palette icon here, brush settings. Um, and all I've got is just a brush with this color on it. And I'm just gonna go around uh, and add in strokes as if this were um, added on with uh, like a marker pen of some kind or something like that. So you can see that this brush follows the directions of what you're swiping at. And I'm just using the mouse here. And I'm just going through and just adding in little splatters around this text. So splashing that over there, splashing a bit over here, just being really whimsical with it, thinking about which direction these um, strokes would have been made in. So that would obviously come up like this way a bit. These O's might, where they bunch up, might have a little bit splashing over them. This Y here where the circle ends and stuff like that. Um, and just really playing around. So that looks pretty good. Let's drop back into our main um, article here. Oh, remember to save it, of course. Uh, and that will bring that sort of stuff up like so. Okay, that's looking pretty good. What we need now is to add in the paper and the rest of this noise effect. So what I've got here then is um, this, uh, Sorry, I completely blanked then. Uh, a few um, spare files of folded paper textures uh, and some noise filters and stuff as well. So I'm gonna go over to my article here and I'm gonna drag in this first um, image that I've got. Now you can get this on Google. Unfortunately, I can't distribute it because that's not part of the license, um, but you should be able to find similar stuff. And I'm just gonna scale that up to fit my page like so. If we want this on the bottom or this on the top. 
That looks about right. Let's leave it like that. We're then going to choose the right blending mode for this. Now, I quite liked color dodge because it adds in a lot of um, contrast to your image. But you can go between color dodge or screen or lighten. Those are probably going to be the three options that you want to pick. I'm going to choose color dodge and then I'm going to reduce the opacity of this just a little bit like so. You can see that's already added a lot of bit, a lot of character, but it almost doesn't look quite real because this section here where the ridge is should have more light hitting it. So I'm going to change the background color of my rectangle, just brighten that up a little bit, and that will bring some of that color back in. Then I'm going to create a new rectangle on top of everything that is a pure white, and I'm going to make it just go to where this fold is. Okay, we're going to grab a filter and blur that. Convert it to a smart object, that's fine. We're just going to blur the edges just a little bit. Maybe maybe 10 pixels or so. And what you can see that's done is just blurred those edges. Now if we rotate this ever so slightly, it should match up pretty well with our fold in the middle of the page. I'm going to go and change this to screen and I'm going to turn the opacity all the way down, maybe down to about 9. And what that does, it just adds a little bit of reflection onto that bottom page. If you don't like it on the bottom, you can, of course, pop it onto the top. See what that looks like. Which looks pretty good, but I think I prefer it down at the bottom, if I'm honest. There we go. And if you think it's a bit distracting of your text, you can, of course, drag it below your text and below your um, color dodged layer. And that will really make it pop. OK, I'm going to leave it on top, though. I think that looks a little bit better. So. Uh, you can see that's added a lot of texture to this text as well. It's almost like pulling in the light changes from behind it. And the blurriness on the text here really makes it feel like it's seated into the paper a little bit. So finally then, the last thing is just to add a, a grain layer on top. So what I've got here is just a rectangle with a smart filter and a noise. The reason I've done that is because you can't do an adjustment layer with noise added onto it. So what we need to do is take uh, a completely black rectangle over the top of the entire poster. Then we need to go to filter, noise, add noise. Convert that to a smart object. And yeah, as you can see, you can increase or decrease the amount of noise drastically. We want monochromatic and it's your choice really between uniform and Gaussian, uh, depending on how much of a strong look you want. Now I quite like about 20%. Subtle, not overly um, distracting. And you're probably gonna want to pop this on a Screen or lighten? I think lighten might look nice, but it's not quite strong enough. Color dodge could work too. That helps just bring up and make all these little sparkle bits pop here. So you can see this really looks like it's burning out the image a little bit. There we go. That's great. And that is how you make this kind of textured um, paper. Now you can choose any texture you want. Like I've got a different texture here with like a water stain on it. Uh, the difference being this one is white, not black. So you might have to choose a different blending mode. That looks quite cool. <laughs> uh, color burn, maybe linear burn. Darker color, soft light, soft light might work. There we go. Now, if you inverted that, of course, you could go back to choosing your color dodge option. And you can see you get some really cool effects here with these um, blending modes. So maybe you'd want soft light for this one and you'd want um, color dodge for this darker one. It's completely up to you. But I think it looks pretty cool. Um, this one I seem to have gone a bit bigger than this, but that's okay. It's really up to you how you do it. It's just a few cool techniques inside of Photoshop. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Bit of an odd one, I know, but somebody saw this uh, and requested I tell them how to make it. So I just made a quick tutorial on it rather than telling them individually. Thanks very much, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you all next time on Tip Top. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.